What I'm going to talk about today is globalization of services, as you can see, a uh, friend or foe. Uh, and I'm going to come down by saying that uh, the United States does face uh, dramatic changes in the global environment. Uh, workers face changes, businesses face changes, and our policymakers face changes. The workers know that they face changes. The businesses are already implementing those changes. What I see a lack of in Washington is an understanding by policymakers that they too have to change. I'm going to focus my remarks on globalization's petri dish. Last night we heard a little bit about uh, science and technology. Uh, you know that in a petri dish, everything uh, that you put in there, the bacteria and so forth, grow a lot faster. And the reason uh, why you do that is so that you can understand what the nature of the disease is or of the, uh, the problem that you have to face. So, Globalization's petri dish for understanding policy is the interplay of information technology and global forces, and it's playing out in the context of services. Why we care about this and how the petri dish works in the context of the economics is that we're looking at a very fast pace of change. The technology is changing very quickly, and that is altering the capacity to fragment production, whether it be a, a, a good, like auto parts, or service, delivering of, consumer, uh, of customer call centers and customer services. The capacity to fragment production has changed radically. It is also the case that this Petri dish is one in which the geography and the pattern of production as well as demand has changed dramatically. So it's not just that we can produce things in other countries. It is also the case that businesses want to, partly to serve the United States market, but also because they want to serve the markets that are expanding most dramatically, and that is overseas. Now, this Petri dish is one where there are very strong synergies between technological change and the global sourcing. The two of them go hand in hand. Innovation and technological change work together with global sourcing. If we imagine, and Richard Freeman last night questioned whether we could even imagine a world where technological change, um, where global sourcing, excuse me, was altered uh, or slowed down. Uh, but if we could imagine that world where global sourcing was in fact limited or restricted, perhaps by one of his four um, uh, horsemen, uh, in that environment, innovation too would slow down. And that is not a good outcome because technological change, innovation, and productivity growth are the fundamental sources of increases in the standard of living.